I think this evening's indicative votes have told us rather more than perhaps we might have indicated. And I think together with the fact that the DUP are apparently not going to be willing to back the government's deal, face both Jeremy Corbyn and Mrs May with some crucial decisions. Because it looks as though there is a possibility at least, at least a rather greater possibility than perhaps I think we might have thought beforehand, that maybe in certain circumstances this House of Commons might be prepared to vote for another referendum. One person to whom that's potentially important message, if at the end of the day she has got to come to the conclusion that the House of Commons is not going to be willing to let her deal through, and given that she has now indicated that she is minded to resign sooner rather than later, and therefore the future of her premiership is frankly no longer something that needs desperately to concern her, I think Theresa May has a question she should be asking herself is, well, actually, should I now say, OK, I will accept the idea that there should be a confirmatory referendum on my deal. I suspect that would be enough to get it through the House of Commons. And she would then get the chance to fight for the deal uh, uh, with the voters. And, and at least she have some chance of winning it. Equally, however, Jeremy Corbyn now also faces an important choice because it looks as though, unlike what many were expecting, there isn't that much enthusiasm in this House of Commons for what we're calling a Norway-style soft Brexit. The only soft Brexit option that came close to winning was a relatively hard one, i.e. us being inside the customs union but not being part of the single market. And Jeremy Corbyn, now, I think, is going to have to decide by Monday whether he's going to encourage his MPs, and given that that's probably the choice uh, when we get to the second stage on Monday, whether or not he encourages his MPs to vote for the second referendum, because at least that is something the Labour Party has said it was in favour of, albeit as its last choice, or does he encourage it to back the customs union only arrangement, which falls short of the kind of Brexit for which he was looking. So I think some tough choices for both our leaders, but perhaps choices that will now be quite crucial to the future of the Brexit process if, as at the moment seems to be the case, the government cannot get its deal through the House of Commons. Indeed. Now, you have figures that show that people, um, since the referendum uh, three years ago, may well have changed their stand on, on how they feel about Brexit. Well, to a degree. Um, but of course, it only needs to be to agree to get a different outcome. We only voted by 52% to 48% to, vote, to leave the European Union um, in the first place. Um, there are two patterns in our data and in most other people's data. The one is that the leave vote is a little bit softer than the remain vote. And that is, leave voters are still a bit, little bit less likely to say they would vote leave again as remain voters are to say they would vote remain. But there's a second thing going on here, which is also very important, and that is that those people who did not vote two and a half years ago, and remember the turnout, although at 71% is high by recent general elections, still provides plenty of scope for people who weren't able to vote or decided not to vote. Um, that group seems to become very decidedly pro-Remain. It begins to become more pro-Remain as the negotiations have proceeded. And then that's, the, uh, in some senses, the movement has occurred. Um, so... This raises two crucial points, however. One is, you know, the polls are consistent enough to raise questions about whether or not it is necessarily still the majority will of the British public to vote to, to, to leave the European Union. But equally, equally, the polls are sufficiently close, they're sufficiently fragile, and the Remain lead rests on the vert support of those who didn't make it two and a half years ago. And none of us can be sure that that indeed is what would happen, that Remain would win um, if we were to have another referendum. Um, truth is, we're split down the middle on this subject, as the House of Commons is split down the middle on this subject. And as a result, there aren't any secure and safe and obvious ways of resolving the dispute.